wonderful outside God in worship service. Amen. Out in the world where the just like the Lord made it. Praise the Lord. What a beautiful day we have to worship Him. If you have your bulletin, look there. We're going to be singing an old hymn of the church. Leaning on the everlasting arms. You ready to sing? Let's sing. is going to take place with everything that's happening and everything is happening very quickly we want to make sure that we're ready to enter into our sanctuary we can do it safely we can do it quickly as possible and as fit efficiently as we can so would you help us pray about that let's approach the Lord now could we father in the name of Jesus we thank you Lord for the ability we thank you for the privilege of worship. God, your word tells us to come into your presence with thanksgiving and praise. So, God, Psalm 46 tells us that God is our refuge and strength. He's a present help in time of trouble. Therefore, he says, we will not fear though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. God, we're holding on to you. And whatever happens, we know that you have us in the palm of your hands. We know that we can be thankful that you have everything in control today. In the name of Jesus, God, receive our worship today and reciprocate with your presence as you promised in your word. And we'll be careful to give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. Continue to worship this morning.
Good morning, church. Good morning. Our word for today is coming from several scriptures. Isaiah 41 and 13. I am the Lord your God who will take hold of your hand and says to you, do not fear, I will help you. 1 Corinthians 16 and 13. Be on your God, stand firm in the faith, be, be men of courage, be strong. Hebrews 13, 5 and 6. He himself said, I will never leave you. We may boldly say that the Lord is our helper. I will not fear what man will do unto me. Deuteronomy 31 and 6. Be strong and be of a good courage. Be not fear, nor be afraid. For the Lord your God, he is the one that goes before you, and he will not leave you nor forsake you. Psalms 27 and 1. The Lord is the light of my salvation, and whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life, and whom shall I be afraid? Timothy, 2 Timothy 1 and 7. God has not given us a spirit of fear and of, of timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. 1 Chronicles 28 and 20. Be strong and, and courage, courageous, and do the work. Be not afraid or discouraged, for the Lord of God, he is with you, he will not fail you nor forsake you until he has worked, until all the work of his service of the temple of the Lord is finished. May God add a blessing to his red word and may these words comfort you. But well, praise the Lord, everybody. Another day, another opportunity to come and worship the Lord our God because he is worthy to be praised. And as this week, I've been thinking on all the goodness of the Lord, how good he is to us in a no matter what. And this morning, as I was thinking as a little girl, I remember my grandmother walking to church. Oh yeah, dad had a car, but they got out and they walked to church. And I said, God, we are so blessed. We've taken everything for granted. Some of you probably never gone there, done that. But I remember, so I know how good God has been to me. That's why I have a yet praise for it. I don't know about you. You know, you might have had it easy all your life. But I have not, so I have a yet praise. Because I know what God has brought me through. 
from. He's a mighty good God. So that's why this morning I enter in with praise and thanksgiving. I'm like Habakkuk. So we're going to go to the Lord in prayer today and praise our mighty God and pray to our mighty God. That is a prayer answering God. Father, we enter in this morning because your word said, enter in with praise and thanksgiving. And Lord, we enter in with praise and thanksgiving. And God will be just like in Habakkuk 3. He said in 17 on that, no matter if there was no fruit on the vine, there might not be any flock in the field or in the stalls, but he would praise you yet. So Lord, we're gonna praise you yet in this pandemic. No matter whether there's money in the bank, food in the cupboard, but God, because we know who will supply our every need. So Lord, we just say thank you today. And God, we stand on your word as James said. Trials and tribulations, they will come, but your word said they come to make us strong. So through this pandemic, I pray that we are getting stronger in you, Lord. Yes. I pray that our focus is not on the pandemic, yes. but God, that we are drawing closer to you. Yes. God, that we are seeking your yes. face, God. That we are listening to you, Father God. Yes. God, that our life will be changed, Father God. That we are getting your word more, and we will pray more, God, and we will worship more, God. Because you are trying to get our attention today. Oh Lord, we love you today. And God, as your words say, we want to love you with all our heart, all our mind, all our strength, God. All our soul, we want to love you. And then God, we want to love others as ourselves. Because God, you are love. So Lord, in this, that whenever we come through, Whenever we come out, God, that we'll be strong. We will be an imitator of you, Jesus. We'll be more like you. Our hearts will be pure. We'll be holier because, God, you said we are to be holy. Yes. Because you said holy is without. No man shall see the Lord. So, God, make us holy today. Fill us today, God, afresh in the new Lord. That we might walk right, Father God. That we might think right, Father God. That we might love right, God. Because everything we do and say, Lord, we want to fully please you. And Lord, bless every person today. Every family, Lord. Every family member today. Everybody here today, Lord. Pour your blessings out. Bless your word today as it goes forth, God. That as we drive out, We'll be different than when we throw in. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. been through hell and back it felt like um, and finally at the end of everything that we had been through my grandfather passed away and sometimes it was just my grandmother and I and sometimes we would we would be at home and we would pray and we would cry and we would try to figure out what God wanted for us and I remember one night we got in the car it was probably between 11 and midnight and we drove out to the Charlotte Airport. Now we lived in Kannapolis. We drove out to the drove out to the Charlotte Airport. And it wasn't a lighthouse, it was a beacon light, you know, like we've all seen at the airport at night and we sat there, you know, she we were going to look at the airplanes, but when we pulled in, she said, "Michael, you see that light?" She said, "Let me tell you something. 
when it feels like the world is falling around you, when you don't know what tomorrow's gonna bring, when you don't know where your next meal is coming from, when you don't know where your healing is coming from, God is a light. And if you just look to Him, He'll make a way. He'll shine a light that you can see your way to Him. And we're going to sing an old song called Lighthouse. And it's special to me. And Lord, I, I've just been worshiping the Lord practicing this song this week. And I hope it touches you because no matter what you're going through, you can look to the light that shines down from the city of God and know that He is your strength and your fortress and your refuge.
somebody say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Amen. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I want to talk to you this morning for just a few moments. The next very few moments. On a subject that I feel like would be appropriate for us. And everything that we're we're trying to go through now. If you have your Bibles there, you can get to them and uh, look with me at the Old Testament. It's 2 Samuel. There's only two verses there. 2 Samuel chapter 23. I want to look at verses 11 and 12. 2 Samuel 23, verses 11 and 12. And I, I just want to speak to you this morning from my heart about a man that we know very little about. Only two verses here that were given as, uh, as any biographical information at all. This is one of David's mighty men, one of David's soldiers. This is, this is one of the men that David depended on and leaned on in his army of about 600 men. But listen to the kind of man that he was. If you're there at 2 Samuel chapter 23, look at verses 11 and 12. After him was Shammah, the son of Aji, the Hararite. Notice this. And the Philistines were gathered together into a troop where was a piece of ground full of lentils. That's peas. That's beans. He was just standing in the middle of a bean field. And the Philistines were gathered together into a troop where was a piece of ground full of lentils. And the people fled from the Philistines. The people, Israelites, God's people fled from their enemy, the Philistines. Then notice this. But he, speaking of Shammah, stood in the midst of the ground and defended it. And he slew the Philistines, and the Lord wrought a great victory. Amen. That's a very simple little story. There's not really much to it, is there? But what a powerful man. Man, that when, when the rest of the army just retreated, he stood his ground, stood his ground, and decided he was going to fight the enemy. And as he was fighting the enemy, the Bible says that the Lord wrought a great victory there. Can I tell you that God is just looking for someone that will stand? God is looking for someone that will stand. And if you look at your Bible, and I hope that you're doing that during this pandemic, during this season of quarantine, I hope that you're getting your Bible out every once in a while. I hope that you're, I hope that you're looking at God's love letter to you. But if you look at this Bible, if you look at the, at the, at the, at the characters of the Bible that are so significant, you will find that many times it was one man or one woman in a generation that God could speak to. And that one person in an entire generation, God was able to work through them and bring about a great and a magnificent victory. And that's what we need today. That's what we need to look at today. And we need to understand that. Father, I pray that you would touch this congregation today here in, in, in our parking lot, our drive-in service. God, I pray that you would help us above, above all else to hear from you today, to hear your voice, because we need people that can hear, that can hear the very voice of God. Touch us, Lord. And let us hear what you're saying to your church and to this generation today. And let us be careful to obey you and do everything that we can do, dear Lord, to be obedient to your heavenly voice in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, you know, I think we've learned a lot 
in these last eight weeks or so. I think we've learned a lot about ourselves. I think we've learned a lot about the world that we live in. I believe we've learned a lot about the people that we live with. A few days ago, I would have described our generation. A few days ago, I would have described our world as we know it, as a very prosperous time in our history. But today, I think there's a watchword that all of us really feel in our heart, although some of us may not even really want to admit it, but I think we would describe the day that we're living as a day of uncertainty. A day of uncertainty. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know who's going to make the next decision. We don't know what the pressure is going to be. Never, never has uncertainty, uncertainty been greater than it is today. When I attended East Coast Bible College, Lee University, when I had my ministerial training in our courses, we never received any training on pastoring a church during a pandemic. We never had any classes on, on, uh, uh, on holding on during a quarantine. And there are teachers in the classroom today, you teachers that teach in our public schools, you, you've never been taught how to teach a lesson without your students. How to teach a lesson to students that aren't allowed to be in your classroom. We've had to be innovative. Then there are doctors, there are physicians that uh, have never been taught how to practice medicine from a social distance of at least six feet and, and, have a, uh, and be able to practice medicine with a closed office. There are nurses. I've got a sister that's a nurse. And, and how do you go from a, a full hospital with patients needing your care to an empty hospital awaiting a surge that never really comes and then you're facing financial ruin as an individual, as a nurse because you're laid off and the hospital is almost going out of business because it's empty. Then there are pastors like myself who attended Bible college and seminary and we're for forbidden to enter our churches and preach or practice our faith among our people. We can't go to the hospital to visit anyone that's sick. We can't go sit in someone's home and hold their hand through an illness or even uh, worse than that, uh, through uh, uh, the passing of a loved one. But you know what I have understood? I have begun to understand that no matter what we're going through and no matter what our problem is, every one of us are in this together. If there's ever been anything that has done away with our differences, it should be this that we're going through now. Because it doesn't really matter if you're a Democrat or a Republican, if you're red or if you're blue, if you're black or brown or white, if you're male or female, it doesn't really matter if you're young or old, if you're rich or poor, if, if, um, if, if no matter what your situation is in life, we're all in this thing together. Amen. And we need to get a hold of the Lord because if we get a hold of the Lord, God can do something about the situation that we're going through. Somebody say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. This is not a local problem. This is, this is not a, a regional problem. This, this is not a national problem. This is a global yeah. problem. This is a global problem. And I believe that everyone that I have heard from, in some way or another, we're fortunate that we know who the Lord God Jehovah is. But across this world, all over this world, there are people reaching out to a God that they do not know and that they do not understand and they've never really heard the gospel, but they're desperate for Him to come into their life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We have an opportunity as the body of Christ. It's amazing how quickly things can change, isn't it? Globally, things have changed. But the Scripture teaches us. It, it's, it's not really anything new. Listen to what the Bible says. Your Bible says that God causes it to rain 
on the just and the unjust. Now listen, we, we understand that a little bit, don't we? I, I heard one amen walking out the walk, walking down the walking down the parking lot that listen listen to me. God causes it to rain it rains on the just and the unjust. Now I don't know about you, but I don't have much of a problem understanding that God causes it to rain on the unjust. You know? That's those people out there. That's those people down that way or down that way or, 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 or back in these neighborhoods that don't go to church, you know? We kind of understand why the Lord would cause it to rain on the unjust. But, but, but the Lord said that He causes it to rain on the just as well. Yes. So what do you do when the rain falls on the just? What do you do when the rain falls on the just? When it's raining on the just. Psalm 46 and 1 was quoted a while ago. God is our refuge and our strength, and He's a present help in time of trouble. Then there's Psalm 81 and verse 10. When it's raining on the just, God says, I am your God. And I like what He said in the balance of that verse. He said, open your mouth wide and I will fill it. Hallelujah. And then there's Psalm 34 and 10. Those that seek the Lord shall not be in want of any good thing. And then Romans 13 and 1. Let every person be subject to the governing authorities for there is no authority except from God. Hallelujah. And those that exist have been instituted by God. We need to read that. Then there's Acts chapter 5 and verse 29. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than men. Somebody praise the Lord in this place. Hallelujah. Don't, don't you miss those moments where you could just laugh. How long has it been since you just had a good laugh? We're, we're, we're sitting around and we're ministering to each other. We're encouraging each other. But our souls are heavy. There, there's a heaviness in our age. I miss those times where we could just sit around the table in a restaurant there and, and after our meal we could have a dessert and a cup of coffee and just laugh. Just a, a good, clean laugh. Wouldn't it be wonderful just to be able to laugh again? It's been so long since I just had a good, a good laugh. But the good news is in the Bible. The good news is in the book of Isaiah. Chapter 61 and verse 3. It talks about put on the put on the robe, put on put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Lift up your voice and praise the Lord in song. Hallelujah. You know what that says? When the spirit of heaviness is present. We need to put on a garment of praise and begin to magnify and glorify the God of all heaven. Lift up your voice in worship unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord. Well, praise the Lord. I'm not the wisest of the wise. But in this uncertain day, there are some things of which I am absolutely certain. In this uncertain day, there are some things that I'm absolutely resolute about. I am absolutely positive. Some things I am absolutely unwavering about. There's some things that are doubtless in my mind. In other words, I, there are some things that I'm just sure of. Are you sure of anything today? Hallelujah. I, I am sure. I am sure. I'm sure that God is still on His throne. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God's still on His throne. I, be I believe with all of my heart. As a matter of fact, I am, I am sure. I am sure. I'm sure that God's Word is the truth. I'm sure of that. I'll stand on that. I'll die next to that. Hallelujah. I believe His Word and I know that God is still in control. And can I just be honest with you? Can I just share something with you from the depth of my soul? Can I tell you that throughout this pandemic, I've not lost one minute's sleep. 
wondering whether God's going to be on his throne or not. I've not, hallelujah, I've not not lost one minute sleep, I've not lost one week of rest over whether or not God is going to be in control. I've not lost one, one moment of rest. Hallelujah. Not thinking that God's not going to be able to handle this. Glory. I'm wondering, I've never wondered if God's going to live through the pandemic. Have you ever thought about that? No. God's going to be here. Hallelujah. And He's going to meet our needs. Thank you, Jesus. I know every promise in the book is mine. And I know that that maybe political men will plot and scheme, but it's God that raises up leaders and topples them just as quickly. And I'm certain that my God is a healer. Yes, He is. Hallelujah. Ha! Hallelujah. I don't think the devil like that. I, I said I'm certain that my God is a healer. I know that. I know that the God that I serve is still faithful. I know that he's all sufficient. I know that he's given his angels charge over me. Hallelujah. I know that he's going to protect me. His goodness and his mercy is going to follow me all the days of my life. And I'm going to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let me tell you something I'm certain of. I know in whom I believe. Yeah. And I'm persuaded that he's able to keep that that I've committed unto him against that day. Hallelujah. What is that? I, I, I know in whom I... Let me just clarify that. Somebody may be here that don't really know me. I'm talking about Jesus. Amen. I'm not talking about Muhammad. I'm not talking about Allah. I'm not talking about Buddha. I'm not talking about ISIS. I'm, I'm not talking about the almighty dollar. I'm not talking about the stock exchange. I'm not talking about Congress. I'm talking about the Jesus that hung on a cross and shed his blood that we can live with him forever. Some things we can just be confident in knowing. Praise the Lord. I'm just glad to know there's a far somewhere. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm glad there's a fire somewhere. Woo! I feel the fire of the Lord here, don't you? Praise God. Praise God. His word tells me what I need to hear. Shama heard the voice of God. Shama heard the call of God to take a stand in the middle of his bean field. And while everybody was running away from the battle, he decided he was going to stay there. Can I tell you something? I believe God is calling his people to get ready for the fight of all history. I believe God is getting ready to call a people that are going to take a stand and say, I'm going to serve the Lord no matter what it costs me, no matter what it takes, no matter what, no, no matter what it takes away from me, I'm ready to take my stand for the Lord. When Israel fled in fear, Shema decided he was going to stand. Fear is a problem in all of our lives. But you know something? Fear is a problem we're going to have to learn to live with. The first time we see fear in the Bible, do you know where it is? It's in the Garden of Eden. After man has fallen and God is faithful to His promise and He comes to Adam and Eve in the cool of the day to talk with them as He had before. And Adam has hidden. Adam and Eve have, have, have hidden out of God's sight. And He calls for them, Adam, where art thou? And Adam said, I'm over here hiding. God said, why are you hiding? He says, because I'm afraid. Sin will cause fear to take over your life. 
All of us have to live with fears. But sin will cause fear to take over your life. Derek Prince says, you can't follow him if you can't hear his voice. Amen. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice and a stranger, they will not follow. But if you don't hear the voice of God, you can't follow him. And I'm not trying to talk like a charismatic and I'm not somebody that just is buddy-buddy with God. We just walk down the road and talk all the time. But I can hear the voice of God. I can read my Bible and hear the voice of God. I can bow my knees in prayer and I can hear the voice of God. And there are some times that just suddenly God speaks into my life. And I hear His voice. Can you hear His voice? My little old cell phone, I've had it so long. My wife laughs at my cell phone because I've had it so long. And she said, you can go get a brand new one. I said, no, I got, I'm, I'm used to this one. I'm used to this one. But you know that cell phone that, is, that has carried me through so many years and been so faithful to keep me in touch with my friends and my members and to call them all and everything. You know, every once in a while, I'll go to sleep and it'll be on the dresser. And when it stays away from the chart, can you hear me out there? When it stays away from the charger too long, it dies. It ain't good for nothing. It can't hear the signal. When it stays away from the charger too long, it's as good as dead. But then I put it on the charger. And when it gets charged up, I can take your calls or I can call every one of you. Let me tell you something. If you've been away from the charger too long, you get to where you can't hear the voice of God. And God is speaking in these last days. Don't you want to hear what God has to say? Yes. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I talk with people every day that are getting weary in their walk. We've been out of work so long. We've been away from the church so long. Some people are getting weary. They're getting, they're getting tired. I'm not saying they're in the middle of sin. I'm just saying they're tired. They're weary. They're weary in the spirit. Let me just tell you something today. If you don't hear anything else I say, let me say this. The fight that we're fighting is worth fighting. Amen. The fight that you're fighting, hey, is worth fighting. The race that we're running, it's worth running. Because the end that we're going to, hallelujah, is worth inhabiting. I feel victory. I feel victory in the air. I feel like saying that breakthrough is coming. I feel like saying kingdom faith is tested faith. I feel like saying so we need to run this race and finish this course and fight the good fight of faith and remember that the race is to believe until the end and the fight is to believe until we win. Somebody say praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory. 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 I don't, I don't know where to I don't know hardly where to go here. Let, let me let me make a, this I, I came across this statement this week. There's a man that I, I read after a lot and he said, God is looking for a man or a woman that can hear the flow of heaven. God is looking for a man or woman that can hear the flow of heaven. Hear what's going on in God's presence. I know what's going on. I can listen to the news, MSNBC or CNN or Fox. I can listen. I can listen to anything and everything, and they'll tell me what they want me to know about what's going on in this world or in Washington D.C. or 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 around the planet. But let me tell you. Let me tell you something. I need to know what God says about the situation. We need to hear what God is saying about the situation, not what man is saying. We need to hear what God is saying. And you know what else I learned? I learned that, listen to, listen, listen to this very carefully. No matter how long you train someone to be courageous. No matter how long you train someone, your children, your friends, your neighbors, 
people in the church and have confidence in you. No matter how long you train people to be courageous and to be brave, no matter how long you train people to be brave, you're not going to find out whether they're brave or not till something real happens. Yes, yes, yes. Anybody hear what I'm saying? Yes. Oh, you can tell them how to fight. You, you can tell them the weapons that they need to use. You, you, you can give them a list of scriptures that they need to memorize. But until the devil gets on their trail, you're not going to know whether they're really in touch with God or not. It's one thing this pandemic has done. It's brought the cream of the crop to the very top. Hallelujah. We're here and we're here to worship and we're here to praise and we're here to glorify a living God. Somebody ought to praise God in this place. Hallelujah. 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 No matter how long you train somebody to be brave or courageous, you never know whether they are or not until something real happens. Now I just had all of that on my mind and on my spirit and felt like I just needed to get it off. Let me talk about Shama for just, just about, just about, I got about, my watch has stopped again. What time somebody got? What time you got? 1230. 1130? Uh-oh, uh-oh. I should have quit 10 minutes ago. Well, since I'm over, I'm over. I want to I wanna give you, very quickly, I want to give you six characteristics. Six characteristics of Shama's courage. You can, just, you, can just, you can just write this down as six characteristics of courage. Let me tell you something. One great man said, courage is what it takes to stand up and speak. Courage is what it takes to stand up and speak. And then he finished that statement by saying, courage is also what it takes to sit down and listen. Amen. <laughs> there's a lot of people that know when to stand up and speak, but there's very few of us that know when you need to just sit down and listen. Amen. Get a hold of God. God wants to say something to you. Sometimes we respond out of emotion or out of hurt. But can I, let me just, let me just say, fear, fear is a reaction. Courage is a decision. Fear is a reaction. Courage is a decision. There, there's six of these. Let me, let me give you the first one here. One characteristic of courage is feeling fear, yet choosing to act. Isn't that good? Yeah. Courage is feeling fear, and yet choosing to act. Anyway, isn't that what Shama did? Everybody ran in fear. Don't you know he felt some fear? Don't you know there was some fear in his life, especially when he saw the whole army run by him and head for the hills? But then he chose, no, I'm not going to run anymore. I'm going to stand right here and I'm going to fight this battle. Psalm 56 says, when I'm afraid, I will trust in God. In God, whose word I praise. In God I trust. I will not be afraid what man can do unto me. Brother, Brother Ron read that earlier so, so beautifully. There. Can I tell you, fear and courage are brothers. You can't... I got to looking at this and I said, I'm always afraid and yet I'm supposed to have courage. And I, and I was reading... One book, it said, a little boy comes to his father and he says, can a man still be brave if he's afraid? And the father responds and says this, this is the only time a man can be brave is when he's afraid. Think about that. Courage, courage. Sometimes, sometimes we got to banish our feelings and embrace our decision. There must be a separation between our emotions in our faith, Romans 8 and 28 is a, is a scripture all of us can quote. But it says there's something that we need to know. That all things work together for good to them that love the Lord and to the called according to His purpose. And, and, we, and we preach our sermons on the balance of that scripture. 
rather than the way it starts. There's some things you just got to know, honey. There's some things you just got to have in your mind. There's some things you just got to stand on and let the wind blow. And let the waves come against you, hallelujah. You just need to know it. And everything that the devil does to me, God's going to turn it for my good and his glory. Hey, praise the Lord. Oh, Lord. Courage. Fear is a reaction. Courage is a decision. Courage, courage is the art. I, love, I like this. Courage is the art of knowing that you're the only one who knows that you're scared to death. <laughs> courage. Courage is the art of knowing that you're the only one that knows. You're the only one that recognizes that you are scared to death. The very definition of courage, listen, includes fear. Courage is the person who fears and does what he needs to do anyway. So without the presence of fear, there is no courage. Amen. Courage is to act on your beliefs despite the danger or the disapproval of others. Amen. Let me, let me give you these. Number one, feeling fear and yet choosing to act. And then secondly, courage is following your heart. It's following what you know in your heart rather than what you see with your eyes. It's a passion. It's passion. Passion is and always should be at the heart of courage. Passion is the emotion, emotion that rose in the heart of David when he heard the voice of Goliath and said, who's going to defeat this giant? It's passion that rose in his heart. It's following your heart. And then next, courage is persevering in the face of adversity. Persevering in the face of adversity. You've got to just, go, sometimes you just got to go on. Amen. Amen. Sometimes you just got to do what you know needs to be done. Amen. Courage, listen to this. You ought to write this down. Courage is not having the strength to go on. Courage is going on when you don't have the strength. Amen. Let me just rest, let me just rest a minute. I got some preaching to do right here. Courage. Courage is not having the strength to go on. Courage is going on when you know you don't have the strength. Courage is the resistance to fear until the mastery of fear has nothing to do with the absence of fear. Preserving in the face of, of, of adversity. No, no, number four, courage is standing up for what is right because the cause yes, yes. is greater than even the possibility yes. of victory. Yeah. Number five, courage is expanding your horizons and letting go of the familiar. Mm. We have had to turn loose of everything we were familiar Jesus. with. And look around you. This lot is filled with people that want to work, that have decided. Jesus. They made a decision. They're going to worship God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Expanding your horizons and letting go of what is familiar. Lord Chesterfield said, man cannot discover new oceans unless he has the courage to lose sight of the shore. Mm. Mm. Then last, courage is facing suffering with the dignity of faith. Facing suffering with the dignity of of faith. There's a story in Acts chapter 12. I, I won't read. I won't read anymore. There's a story in Acts chapter 12 of how Peter has been arrested and he's supposed to be executed in the morning. And the Bible picks up the narrative in the middle of the night He's sound asleep in the prison. 
There's something about being full of the Holy Ghost that will give you peace Jesus. no matter what you're going through. And the Bible says that all of a sudden there was a light in his prison cell. And there was an angel. The angel of the Lord showed up there. And simultaneously the, 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 the shackles, the handcuffs that were on his arms and on his hand fell off of him. And the angel had to nudge him awake. I mean, had to shake him real good and say, Peter, get out of bed. And Peter looked up and not even knowing who it was or anything, the angel said, put on your clothes, which tells you that he had already put on his pajamas. The angel said, put on your shoes, buckle on your shoes, which tells you he was barefooted. He was relaxing there in his cell, supposed to die the next morning. Hey, he's got more grace than I've got. <laughs> I'd have been worried to death. And he, he, he finally rubs the sleep from his eyes and he walks over and the door opens by itself. I heard C.R. Spain 40 years ago preach this message. And he said, I thought the Piggly Wiggly was the first one that had automatic doors. <laughs> but he said they had it back in the book of, book of Acts where they walked towards the door and the door automatically opened. And Peter walked out a free man. And when Peter got out of the prison, the angel disappeared. And so Peter heads his way down to where the church is praying for him in a home. And the Bible, and I'd never seen it. I'd never seen it. I'd never noticed it before. Play something, Jim. I'd never noticed it before. The Bible says, and Peter knocked on the door. That don't mean anything to anybody, does it? But you got to have a mind like I've got. I'm imagining this thing. And I'm seeing Peter as he's standing there knocking on the door. And Brother Ro, Rhoda comes to the door and said, who is it? He says, Peter and Peter and, and Rhoda don't believe it. No, Peter's in prison. They've been praying that Peter would be released. And Peter has come to where they're praying that he'll be released. He's been released. And they don't believe him. Now listen to this. Listen to this. In that chapter, the Bible clearly says, Peter continued knocking. He's standing there on the front porch, knocking on the door. Look at the language. The sun's coming up. It's sunrise. Here's an escaped prisoner from death row standing on the front porch of a house knocking on the door. You know, let me tell you something. You know that there are guards out looking for him. You know that the police are out looking under the bushes and looking down the roads won't know where he is. And the Bible says that Peter just standing there knocking on the door in broad open daylight when he knows that they got to be looking for him. Oh, hallelujah. Do you know how he can stand there on the front porch and knock on the door and not because the angel that got into that prison and took the chains off of him and had them fall. The angel that had the door to open up for him Hallelujah. He had confidence in the Lord. He had courage. He may have dealt with his fear, but he had courage that God could bring him through. Can I tell you that the God that you serve can bring you through this situation? You may have lost your job. You may be facing bills that you can't pay. Let me tell you, the God that brought you this far is not going to release you. He's not going to turn you loose. He's going to take you through to absolute victory. Hallelujah. I preach beyond my time. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the privilege of prayer now, Lord. And I know that there are people that are listening me, to me today that they're, they're, they're trying to muster up their courage. They've had some challenges. They've had some problems. 
they've faced some difficulties with their families. Oh God, we've had a hard time making ends meet. Some, some may have members of their family that's in the hospital and not really sure about what's going to happen to them. They can't even go and, and, and embrace that family member. They can't sit with them. They can't even hold their hand or even whisper to them a few, a few last goodbyes. But God, somehow you've got everything in control and somehow you're going to bring your people through this. And God, when we get on the other side, we're going to understand it better by and by. I pray a prayer of comfort and strength and peace on all of our families here that are associated with Eastway. And if there's anybody here that doesn't know Jesus in the full pardon of their sin, God, I pray that you would reveal to them the simplicity of their redemption. Even right now, Lord, help them to ask God to forgive them anything in their life that is not like Christ so that we can go forward. Now, Lord, may the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart be acceptable in your sight. God, our strength and our redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you today. We love you.